Okay, day 106, part 2, and this is the International Atomic Energy Agency. This is the agency that tracks nuclear waste as well as nuclear material. Um, and this is the incident and traffic ing database, uh, another potential source of documentation, ITDB, okay? And it talks about the illicit trafficking of unauthorized and unauthorized activities involved with radioactive materials. Now, interesting, since the beginning of megatons to megawatts, megatons to megawatts starts in 93 and goes to about just uh, 2015. Uh, during that period of time, and also you've got to remember Uranium-1 starting in 2006 going through 2000 and now, um, that there are exactly 762 incidents with the theft or loss of nuclear material, including high quantities of potentially usable nuclear material, highly enriched uranium and plutonium. Okay, so these are going to be investigated. Now, you may remember when I said that Mitch McConnell, director of the, or excuse me, the head of the Senate, uh, his wife is Elaine Chow, director of transportation. Um, the Department of Energy is the U.S. agency with the NNSA that would be in charge of of tracking this material. Now, this is especially significant, especially significant, since the Russian uranium that came to us, and I have several sources for this that are on the ground directly working on the case for the uh, folks that are in Pikestown, Ohio, and in Paducah, Kentucky at the two places, as well as the Metropolis uh, spinning plant, uh, uranium spinning plant in uh, Illinois, that it had a great amounts of transgenics, uh, elements beyond uranium uh, here, uh, element 92 here, going into plutonium, which is going to be uh, plutonium 239, 239. Now the interesting thing about plutonium-239 is it can be used in thorium reactors. So you could, if you could separate this, I hope you're not using the folks in Metropolis, Illinois to separate this, but they think they have been used. You could use this in thorium reactors and build up a base of thorium reactors and then dump the rest. Now here is the part of the story that has not been told, but I believe it will be told soon that many, many independent 8A firms would set aside business from the different GSA and S Small Business Administration received contracts for disposing of this waste. And many of the firms uh, did not have accounting of the uh, correct disposal, especially around the Paducah, Kentucky area. And that's going to be especially significant because this material also can be used in fracking, fracking, which there has been an incredible amount of fracking, as everyone knows, in Ohio, West Virginia, and Tennessee. And a tremendous amount of this can be used in leaching uranium, like in the uh, Lavoie Finicum case up in uh, Oregon, and also the uh, Bundy case down in Nevada, as well as in Utah and many other places where we just don't know where there's been large national parks established. So this is the other side, the uglier side of Uranium-1. This is not the high value side, this is the waste side, but this is acidic material, a lot of hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid, so forth. Great for leaching, terrible for the environment. And then of course you've got maybe the stocking of Uranium-239 or you could use this for small nuclear explosions for the exploration of more uranium or the exploration of oil or gas. So we'll see what happens with this ITB report. But again, on yet another source of material that we're going to be able to go to when we get the right people in the right positions at ITDB.